talking behind scenes. <laughs> All right. So hello and welcome to the Transformational Speakers Podcast. I'm your host, Erin Lomanjek, and I'm excited about our guest today. And Angel Tushi, she is an award-winning speaker, radio host, TV producer, PR media specialist, and 15 times best-selling author. I mean, if you can't just do it once, why not just do it 15 times, right? She obviously knows what she's doing in this arena. With her help, her clients have been featured in thousands of media, major media publications, television, radio, podcasts, magazines, and stages. She was awarded the most influential woman of the year, best morning talk show, the best talk show team during her 12 years in broadcasting. She's been featured in the Marquise Who's Who <clears throat> on the cover of Lemonade Legend magazine. She shares stages with top influencers and has been the host of three daily talk shows. She is just an amazing individual on top of it. Like, think of all those accomplishments, guys. Like, she's not just sleeping on uh, sleeping on the job over here. So welcome to the podcast. I can't wait for my guests to get to know you a little bit better. Erin, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me today. Of course. So I know that it's not like a straight line. Like, you didn't wake up at five, like five years old and go, I can't wait to be a talk show host. I can't wait to help people with media. Tell us how you got to where you are today. Oh, right. I did not want to be a talk show host. That's for sure. Um, I was actually the girl who almost didn't graduate high school because I was so afraid of public speaking, had absolute stage fright when it came to standing in front of my audience or my peers. It couldn't even describe how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? A simple task. My mouth would dry up, the butterflies in the stomach, everything. And somehow I ended up in broadcasting after, after all of that. But it started with a podcast. I started with a weekly podcast. Um, you know, we had a friend who had a whole kit and caboodle, like the whole studio kit in his basement. And I would go there every week and we would host a podcast once a week, just featuring the local businesses that I was um, networking with in my local chamber of commerce. And our local radio station discovered us picked us up, said, would you like to be the host of your own actual radio show on traditional radio? So took us over first day in the studio. I took my headphones off and said, this, this is what I want to do. I want to become one of the top, top radio producers and radio hosts in the country. And pretty much for the next 10 years, I had just, that was my goal was, was to be, was to be in broadcasting and it all got started because of a podcast. <laughs> I love that. It's so funny because before podcasting was even out here, I had a radio show in Seattle and I loved bringing people into the studio and doing some of that work. And so when it became available to do it from home, I was like, this is so much better. Like I can do this and get such a global reach. You know, it was only, you know, the local to Seattle. They didn't even broadcast it anywhere but it was mostly on my Facebook page because then I could stream it there so people could listen in to try to even increase my own uh, reach in that. So I love that about podcasting. It is such a great opportunity to expand your reach, leverage other people's audiences, right? And that's what you're doing with media. So I hear you're the media matchmaker. Tell me more about how you guide your clients to more media opportunities. Oh, they do call me the matchmaker. Like I've always been a connector. And, you know, people tell me what they do, what their expertise is, and I've just always been really good about bringing people together and building connections and building relationships. And so that's how I ended up becoming a matchmaker for media. Somebody says, hey, I've, I'm looking for a guest. I'm looking, Angel, do you know a speaker? We're doing this event. I'm like, I do. And so I would just start sending emails or direct messaging, text messages to, to folks to connect them to each other. And ended up building up an incredible database of speakers, people who wanted to be guests, people who actually had podcasts and shows and TV and magazines. And when I kind of outgrew my, my immediate sphere of influence, I created a Facebook group online that today, just or just this last week, crossed over 13,000 members of people who are connecting with hundreds of podcasters and journalists and stage stage hosts and people that are looking for guests every single day. And I just get to, I just get to say, like, sprinkle my little fairy dust over them and say, I, I did that. 
I love that. It's the ripple effect, right? Like for me as a speaking coach, I get so excited because I might never talk to your audience, but if I can help you do a really great job and transform lives on the stages that you're here to serve and the people you're here to serve, that ripple effect gets me so excited because the reason I became a coach, a business coach and a speaking coach was really truly to change the world. And now we get to do that. And I get to do that through other people's voices, other people's messages. And I do like, I love that little fairy dust of the, the definite connections that we are able to make. And I know that I always say being a connector, cause I'm a master connector too. It's almost like we're tuned into a, a major Rolodex, like a spiritual Rolodex that you're like, oh, I need to connect this person and this person. And sometimes we don't even know why, right? Right. Like, and so that is right? all day long. I, you see something you're like, I know. And I, I think one of the things I love about social media is how easy it is to tag people in a post, to make a connection, to make an introduction. You know, we don't have to physically be in the same time zone, uh, you know, anywhere on the same continent. We can make that instant direct message and tag each other. They can go and see each other's bios. In fact, you and I, we just connected and became friends just today. And we have almost 150 friends in common. And so we were destined, right? We were destined to meet, but you are so right. Like the, the impact we can make sharing our story on other people's stages, the ripple effect that we are putting out there is, is limitless. I mean, the, I mean, it's the, it's the old, I don't know. Are you old enough to remember the old TV commercial where she told two friends and she told two <laughs> friends and she told two friends. Yes. I just had that flashback, like instantly. That's what we're doing here is I'll tell two friends. I shared you on my social page. And because there's some friends in common, there's some familiarity, it's really easy for others in the same, kind of in my same pond to go, I want to know Erin too, right? She's right. she's in our world. She's in our space. And, and we can grow and make an impact just by being willing to step up and step out and share our story. I love that. I mean, I think the reason I decided to do this, so for everyone that's listening, we are going to be actually meeting in person in real life. <laughs> like sometimes it feels like you get to meet all these people, especially of the last three years, right? Only on virtual stages, right? But we're literally going to take our connection to an in-person event in February in Miami. And I'm super excited about that. You were, you know, this is how small the world is, right? Knowing that we both lived in Florida, knowing that we have 150 friends in common, but the Global Awaken Summit is attracting our tribe. So tell them a little bit about what you are bringing to that stage so that people are more interested in joining us February 24th to the 26th. Well, I'm super excited. This is my first time speaking at the Global Awakened event. Kessa reached out. And when I heard what she was a part of, all the things that she's been doing in the past and giving back and bringing people together, I was so excited to be invited. But we're talking about really taking your, your story, your story matters. I think so often we second guess of whether or not, does anybody care? This is the biggest thing when I tell people, to put together a press release and connect with the media or put your pitch together, they get this little voice in their head, like who cares and does it really matter? And does anybody want to hear that? Is it exciting enough? Like we back ourselves out of opportunities all, all the time. And so I will be there to inspire, encourage you and to encourage you on what is the media looking for? What stories are sticky? How can we position that? But honestly, it's you staying in your lane, you serving people in your authentic self, the way that you want to serve them, because you will attract the right tribe into, into your world just by being you. But there are some little nuances that we can do to make it attractive, like you, like you do um, for your speaker clients, right? Messaging is everything, buttoning up the message, and how do we put that together? And, but really, it's just giving permission. I think it's permission to go out and share your story on a bigger platform. I do. I think a lot of people in this industry, coaches, authors, speakers, experts, thought leaders, it's hard to see outside of yourself because you're like, oh, why would anybody care? Who am I to say this stuff, right? And then you have the media who is like, can somebody bring me something that I can put on there, right? And so you have these two worlds where these lone silo, you know, entrepreneurs and, and experts don't realize that they're being sought after 
but don't know how to do that. And don't know like they, well, you should want to be excited about whatever I'm going to talk about, but instead learning how to pitch, learning how to change that so that somebody in the media goes, now that's a story I want to share, right? So tell us a little bit how that works, because I think there's a lot of people going, okay, this would be great. I'd love to be on TV. I'd love to be on radio. You know, a lot of people understand podcasting a little bit easier. How do I pitch the like major media and major publications and things like that? What is my special sauce, right? What is your special sauce? That's a great question. So if I was to ask you, Erin, and it, special sauce is a good word. I usually use magnet. What's the magnet, the core, like the key word, the key topic that when people think of you, that they also think of that topic. And when they think of that topic, they think of you. What would be the key word for that? Mine is transformational transformation so is this like business transformation money transformation mindset let's put a second keyword yeah to that. it's a little bit of all of that so that's why i use the most generic word if i can come up with it mm -hmm. a lot of people so what i use is my psychology background in helping speakers and coaches really you know dial in their message and do what they need to do whether that's a ted stage whether that's just speaking on a stage like we're going to be doing at the at the summit but really truly what it goes deeper into is how you're perceived on that stage is actually converting people. So people have deemed me the queen of stage conversions because I get your audience so excited, so high on their own supply of neurochemicals. They want anything that you're going to be selling or talking about, right? And even if you can't pitch what you're doing, people are like, oh, I want that. I feel so connected. I feel so resonated. She's really helping me transform my how I see myself and see the world. Okay. I love that. So I'm just going to just back out just a little bit. You asked, like, what's the special sauce? So I just typed in public speakers, super generic term. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, super generic term, just to kind of get us started. And I typed that into my Google, my Google search bar, right? Google's so good. They go out, they find everything that there is, right? When it comes to the term public speakers, every blog, every call for speaker site, like every single thing out there in the world. But there's a there's like a sub filter that you can kind of filter down your search. Maybe you just want images, shopping, videos. Have you ever like hyper yeah. hyper targeted your search engine before? Yeah. Okay. There's one that says news. When I look at look up public speakers and I click on news, it brings me an organic media database, a list of media outlets that are covering the topic of public speakers right now. And it's about 17 million results. Right? I'm like, mm, I gotta get mm, busy. <laughs> that's pretty juicy, right? That's pretty juicy. So here's step number one is recognize that the media is already talking about you. They're already covering your topic. So when we pitch to them, I want to come in as an expert. I've got a story about public speakers. Right? I have a special sauce. I have a really unique formula. If I come into them and this is what we're talking about, this isn't weird to them, right? Like, oh, perfect. Like you said, would somebody give me a story? Would somebody give me some content? Would somebody help me out? We have 17 million opportunities sitting on the board right now of Harvard Business Review, Radio and Television Business Report, Startup Info, The Flat Hat. Now, I don't know, like <laughs> some of these media opportunities I've never heard of. Like we all think of the majors, like right? the main ones that everybody's kind of vying for. Mm -hmm. But how easy would it probably be to go to The Flat Hat? I mean, I, I don't know anything about that. I don't even know what that, that right? is, <laughs> right? Right. And so, you know, if it's if it's a porn site, I, I didn't send you there. Um, so there there are media opportunities every day and there's probably some smaller uh, syndicated outlets that you could really build a really valuable relationship, a strong relationship with a journalist by reaching out to them and imagine that now once a month they're like, hey, what else you got? All right, Aaron, we're doing another article. News goes in cycles. So if they're covering it now, probably monthly quarterly, even annually. We had a, we had a client who was invited to be a, to come to the white house a couple of years ago and decorate the white house for Christmas. So oh. his press release shows up every year. It cycles around. So if somebody's talking about, and it comes up news cycles, so number one, find your magnet, find what topic that you can type into the search bar and find the journalists that are already covering your topic. 
you go where you belong, like where you fit. You're not trying to convince them that talking about public speakers is a good idea. They already got you, right? So number one, what's your magnet? Number two is to start to build relationships with journalists that are already in your space, right? And, and if we're talking about, imagine this, if you were a guest and featured in two interviews a week, right? Two media opportunities a week, that's exposure to over 100 fresh new audience, right? A whole group of people who never heard of you before. That's impact, right? Yeah. That's amazing impact. So you get to stay in your lane, do what you do, connect with journalists and build relationships. And so that's one of my, like, that's like the first hack I do with my clients is, is there even an opportunity here? And let's, let's hone in this topic until we get the search, the organic database search, because I want to go where they're excited to hear about me, where they're like, Angel, I love, like, we need you. That's what I want versus, you know, you want to talk about what? Like, who cares? Like, I don't want that. I want, I'm so excited. You ended up in my inbox. Right? You're sending me stuff that is super valuable to me. And this is like, this is just one quick little hack that everybody can do on their phone today and just light you up and juice you up to know that the world wants, the media wants your story. I love that because I think that's true. I think in the lone silo of working, you know, in your home office or whatever, you don't think about how many people are actually seeking you out. Right. And I love that because if you ever get one of those days where you're like, who cares what I talk about? Nobody cares. Nobody, nobody really, maybe I'm not making an impact or a difference in this world. Go Google that and then see how many people are actually excited about what you have to say. I love that. I think that's a really great, not only for just, you know, okay, go out there and now start engaging these things, but even just to remind yourself that there is a lane for you. I, yes, absolutely. The mindset, because you're right, we do. We're, we get in our own space, in our own head and in our own way, and we can talk ourselves out of it. When you open that up and you're like, okay, I got some work to do. I got some people out there that do want me, that are looking for me. And I, I you know, I was chatting with, I was on a, a call the other day with a gentleman who talks about mindset. And he says that we become addicted, right, to, to the problem that we say we have. So if we say there's no business out there for me, right, and, and we think it's got to be really hard and nobody wants to, right, we're not going to find, we're going to kind of set our, our, our thermostat at only being like, it's hard, I can only bring in this many clients, I can't get over it, that we actually become addicted. And so we need to create some dopamine, right, in some other places. Doing this Google search, totally take you out of your funk, right? Like, okay, I'm going to reach out to some of these people. And when I go through, right, each one of these and click on them and be careful what you click on, right? So <laughs> safe, safe interneting out there. Um, I can, I can usually get directly to the journalist that wrote that article and I can reach out to them directly and become a resource, a trusted resource for them. Um, this is a little, this is a little heavy lifting. Like it's a, you know, a lot of manual labor on the, on the front side, but if all you did was just use it to get yourself out of bed in the morning and get yourself out of like, and somebody rejected you or somebody turned, like turn this on and go, all right, I'm back in the saddle. Cause there's still more, there's more where that came from. Right. So you yes. get turned on from this one, but you get it totally changes your life on this side because it's like, you have this loyal following over here. Right. So it's like, so what, you know, next, like, it's not that big of a deal. And I really think that that is a great way of reminding ourselves that we are making an impact because that's why we do what we do. That's why we got, get up every day. And sometimes we do, we just get a little stuck thinking, who cares what I have to say, right? But they do. They and do. when they don't see you, you're just kind of out of sight, out of mind for a while. But then the minute you kick back up, everyone's like, thank God you came back. Like <laughs> Well, and that's one of the things I think Kessa is bringing together with this Global Awakened event is let's just be awakened, right, to what we bring, to the energy we bring, to what's possible out there, and let's do it together and not feeling like we're all alone, kind of doing the same thing we've always done, right? It's time, like we've been in our, we've been in, we've been at home, we've been social distancing, we've gone through like all, all the things, right? Yeah. So let's come together. I mean, how can 
I mean, it's in the title, like global awakened, right? Like you are going to, something's going to be awakened inside of you, in your community or on a global impact. And, and so, yeah, it's, it, it, the promise is in the title. It really is. That's what I love about this. Okay. So for those who don't know, we're going to be speaking the Global Awakened Summit in Miami, February 24th through the 26th. The link will be in the comments. You'll be able to get registered but really check out, we have an amazing lineup of individuals. I'll be hosting a lot of them on the summit, on the, on the podcast here, but it's really, truly, I even love it for, you know, when Kessa was like, well, how else should I, can I get some, some people to attend? I'm like, let me interview everybody on the, as a, the panel. And some of the people, some of these speakers I've had on my podcast, I've had on summits. So we already know each other. But I love that it even that is connecting all of us global leaders together to lift the consciousness of the planet, get people to understand their value and their worth and the impact that they're here to create. And I just think this is an awesome opportunity for people to join us. Come join us. We have amazing opportunities. You're going to hear from amazing speakers. There's going to be um, a gala. There's going to be a mastermind on a yacht. I mean, who doesn't want to be in a yacht in the ocean? Right. I'm just saying, if this is something that you're interested in, please attend. Come and join us. We're excited to meet more of you, especially knowing that, yeah, right now, just on here, we have two master connectors. If the only thing that happened out of the summit is you got to meet one of us and we did some intros for you, I think that would be worth it. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, think about our database. Think about, you know, our connections and who we know and after a conversation what doors and and i truly believe like the one person just meeting one strategic person could change the trajectory of your life if you think back of the seat you're sitting in right now and and just all the different people and some of the different things like who who triggered that who triggered down this path um i was on a phone call yesterday aaron with a woman that i had met through my facebook group and we got on the phone and she's like, wait a minute, are you that angel? I thought I was talking to this thing. I'm like, that is me. She goes, but I was getting ready to come to Vegas at an event that I'm speaking at this next weekend to meet you. And I mean, it was crazy. And she's like, the universe be universing, wanted us to for sure meet each other and kind of brought us together, um, you know, kind of slammed us together, even though we were going to see each other next week all this like series of events, people, people make an impact, right? People impact you every day, but you've got to show up to create that conversation. And sometimes the events, you guys know, right? Yeah, we get incredible value. The speakers come, we come for what they're going to teach us in the room or from the stage, but it's really, it's the people in the room, right? It's hallways, lobbies, bathrooms, bars, right? It's the side conversations that really, create the the energy right who are they going to connect us to what are those side conversations yes incredible speakers you're going to learn from the top in the industry top notch they're bringing their best they've there's they're they're people that are actually out there doing it be you know they're a couple steps ahead of where you want to be and we absolutely want to learn from them but the connections and the relationships the networking you it's so valuable and of course on a yacht <laughs> I, I, I'm so excited. My first one, I'm really looking forward to it. I've gone through and seen some of the videos of the testimonials of events that she's had in the past. And it just looks like, it just looks like a kick and fun time. And I'm so, I'm so excited to go. Well, I'm excited to be back in Florida. It's, it's snowing and cold here, like to 11 degrees right now. It's supposed to snow five more inches. I'm like, yes, I get to be back in the sun and on the ocean. Like that is, in my other like little thing, like, oh, it gives me a break from the doom and gloom here uh, during Aaron, the winter time. Where, where do you live? I live in North Idaho. In North Idaho. Okay. Okay. I lived in Colorado for 20 years. We just moved to Florida two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you right outside this door, it is sunny. It is 78 degrees. There's palm trees. We sat outside and had lunch. I'm just, I'm in awe. I'm in awe. This is only my second winter here. And and I'm never cold, I'm never cold. But I will tell you, I just went to an event in Houston and I have no idea how to dress for the rest of the country. I showed up, short sleeve shirt or dresses, bare legs, open-toed shoes. 
I needed sweaters. Luckily, it was across the street from a mall. Sorry, honey, I had to go buy some new boots. Right? <laughs> um, but I forget how to dress for the rest of the country. And so um, anyways, it'll be fun to have you here. So, but leave the boots at home. Yes. No, I, I for sure. I think after living in Florida, I became desensitized mm -hmm. towards the cold. And so now that I've moved back, like I was like, I hate the cold. I hate the snow. I cannot get warm. I'm like, how did that happen? Because I was born and raised here. <laughs> but you know, it's, it'll be, it'll be an amazing opportunity. So if any of you are living in the cold areas and just want to get away, <laughs> February 24th and 26th will be the place to be. So let me, <clears throat> let me ask you the question that I ask all of my guests on my podcast. I always talk about my future self. My future self is ELJ. She sat under the trees with Oprah, New York Times bestselling author. She's done all the things, right? When I need advice, I ask her for advice because she's already been through all of this. So if your future self was to come here today, what advice would she give you? Oh, she would say, she would say, trust yourself um yeah stop stop thinking it's got to be hard there are just some days and and I know it and there's some days I just go with ease but every now and then I slide back and think it's think it's like I gotta do I gotta be hard like it's gotta be harder than this right um you know I came from a family of, of non-entrepreneurs like hard workers like like salt of the earth right and sometimes I think I got to make it hard like that too. Um, you know, mom was a, we cut coupons, we bought stuff on sale. I mean, it was just, we were tucking money away from little, like I just, sometimes I think I got to go back and then, and, and then, I, I, yeah. So just trust, right. Trust that I wasn't given this vision without the support uh, from the universe comes to support me, guide me, create miracles every single day. And, and that and just trust, just trust. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just never know what you people say. And that, this is always my favorite thing because you get some of these amazing nuggets because as you're speaking to yourself, we're all speaking, hearing <laughs> that and going, yes. Okay. I'm hearing you too. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes I do feel a little guilty, right? That, because I'm like, I'm not laboring, right, to do this. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I was given a gift. It was, you know, and now I, I just think, you know, connecting people, like, yeah, that's not hard. It, it's not hard, but it does have value. It is a gift. I am a cheerleader. I am an encourager. Um, you know, it doesn't really feel like, like you should, like, be paid for that. <laughs> I know. I think that's when I started monetizing that, when I started saying, oh, if I introduce two people and a big deal gets made and I get a percentage of that, hmm, you know, like that's smart because it is taking, I mean, it does take a special talent to be able to like maneuver and figure out who perfect people are for each other. But at the same time, it, because it's such a gift and it's so easy, like you yeah. just said, mm -hmm. that it can be lucrative and you should get paid for that because you are adding value to the world. Yes, yes, yes. So some days I totally rock it, totally get it. Know my value, stand in my space, got my big girl up panties on, right? Got my <laughs> yoga pants on. But then there are, there's just moments where that little voice just wants to come in and, and it is, it's past behaviors, it's, you know, past environments, or even maybe somebody I'm talking to, you know, and taking their energy on a little bit too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what a great question. Like I, that one's still like going, okay, what else would I tell myself? <laughs> <laughs> Ask yourself daily. It's, it's a good, it's a good thing. Uh, Cause it really does get you outside of your own self and into the, you know, and I always even borrow confidence. There was mm -hmm. one time there was three men speaking on stage. It was a speaker's event. And I was like, there should be a woman speaker up there because there's more women in the audience than men. What are we doing? And these are three big names, huge names in the industry. <clears throat> and I challenged it, but I had to like bring on my ELJ confidence because she would be like, bros, what are you doing? Like you need a woman on the stage. So I did. And they were like, you know what? You're right. Yeah. So sometimes you can just borrow her confidence in order to do the things or get through some things that you might find that you're a little nervous about. 
I love it. I love it. I, you know what? I remember, you know, a few years ago, kind of thinking that same thing. It's, it's a lot of men on the stage and, and kudos to them for serving us, but it is a lot of women in the audience. And that's actually how I ended up in stepping into public speaking. Aaron was, was somebody saying that we need more women on stages. And I was deathly afraid, right? Fear of public speaking. And, but I thought I can, I can be part of that. And I, cause I believe in that. And so for a year I did it terrified and excited, one foot terrified, one foot excited. And I stepped up on that stage, shaking and nervous and the voice and all of that. And I still, I still get really nervous before I go on stage, but I tell myself it's excited. Yep. <laughs> and I'm excited. The same, neurochemicals, the same neurochemicals are released yes. when you're excited and nervous. All you have to do is tell your body it's excitement and then it'll start to dissipate. Yes. Right. So I'm excited to be here and, and know that it's not about me, but it's about, it's about the people in the room and the message. And, and I'm just a vessel, right? I'm just a vessel and I'm just the brave vessel that's stepping up and, and, and sharing today. So somebody has got to say yes. And if, and if you don't know exactly how you don't know, have all the details, not even sure, right. You're a little scared about it. Sometimes that's where the biggest transformation shows up and, stepping out and just know that the world, like the people here are, are, are here to support you. Nobody wants to see you fall. Nobody wants to see you fail. Like everybody here, like I said this earlier, like if I've got a candle, my candle's lit, I can light your candle too. And mine will still shine just as bright. And we can light lots of candles and my mine will still shine just as bright. We want a whole room of candles lit, but, but you got to show up. So you got to come to the yeah. global awakened events, right? Global awakened events.com and hang out with us. I love it. So how do people find more about you? And I, and you, you talked about your group. So I'd love for you to tell us how we can get a part of your group. Cause I'm joining for sure. And so like, let us know how we can find more about you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm super excited. So I have a couple of things I have. If you're interested at all in just stepping into media exposure, traditional media, leveraging that we put together a complimentary guide and it, it gives you instant media, media opportunities, what to send to them, like all the whole kitchen sink. And you can grab that at my website, makeyourbigimpact.com, makeyourbigimpact.com. And then our media matchmaker group is on Facebook. It's called Need a Guest. So if you need a guest, that's where you go. And you can get there through needaguest.com. It'll take you right to the Facebook group. I love that. Well, we're super excited about meeting together in person. I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. So don't forget to get your ticket for the Global Awaken Summit, February 24th through the 26th in Miami, Florida. Oh, I can't wait. And we will see you on stage. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Erin.